Hi, and welcome back to Flying Me Out of Garage. My name is Nick Kraus, and today we'll be talking about coilover ride height adjustment. Uh, if you guys have questions or anything else uh, during the video, make sure to post them down below in the comments. And uh, if we don't get to them during the video today, uh, we will get to them after the video and post answers to you there. Uh, so to start off with, uh, why coilovers? Uh, so there are a number of reasons to upgrade to coilovers from your standard suspension. Uh, first of all, you get ride height adjustment, uh, so you can actually set uh, the ride height using the spring perch uh, to set how high or low the car sits on its suspension. Uh, the ride height adjustability will also give you uh, the ability to corner balance uh, your, your Miata if you are doing competitive track uh, usage or just want the perfect setup on your Miata. Um, some models also have adjustable damping, so you can further fine tune the, the, your suspension performance on track or on the street. Uh, so let's start off with uh, showing how the ride height is adjusted. So here today in front of us, we have a one of the coilover shocks that we sell, uh, the VMAX. Uh, this model is the Extreme Sport. We also have one of our Fox coilovers here as well. So we'll start off with the VMAX shock here. So for the ride height adjustment on these, you have a lock ring down below here that spins up into the actual spring perch, and when you tighten these together, that spring perch can't move and it will uh, solidify that uh, height adjustment. Uh, to go up or down, you want to loosen that lock ring like that, and now you can use a coilover wrench like this. There's a number of other designs out there as well. That, teeth will, that tooth will latch in there, and you can use this to spin this perch up or down, depending on whether you want to raise or lower the right height of your coilover. And once you're done, you just want to tighten that lock ring back up there to set that adjustment. On these here, on the Foxes, there is no lock ring, so you just have a little pinch bolt right down here, which you'll simply just use a little Allen key uh, to loosen, and then once you have that perch loosened, you can actually turn the perch on the shock body like that, up and down, uh, same kind of method as the perch here, uh, to set the right height, and once you have the right height set to where you'd like, you can just tighten that lock screw up. Uh, so your coilovers may not be quite the, exactly the same as these. Uh, there's uh, plenty of designs out there, um, but in a lot of cases, the adjustment's going to look really similar to these. Uh, so for uh, recommended ride height settings uh, on these coilovers here, with uh, we like to see on uh, NA and NB Miatas, we like to see about 12 inch ride height measurement in the front and about 12 and a half inches in the rear. Uh, for NCs, we like to see about 13 and a half inches in the front and about 13 inches in the rear. And for the ND generation, we like to see about 13 inches both front and rear. And we take that measurement uh, by measuring. Thank you. We take that measurement by starting at the center of the wheel hub here and measuring right to the fender lip directly above it. And that's how we get that right height measurement front and rear. With the suspension on the ground, of course. Uh, so one of the critical things to do before uh, you get these uh, ride height measurements set, or before you even adjust them, is you'll want to make sure that the control arm bushings are loose. Uh, so the way you do that is by starting here on the car. So you have a couple of bushings on each control arm here for the upper control arm. You have the upper bushings here and here, and one bolt going through both of them. And on the bottom here, you have a bushing in the back, and a bushing up here in the front. And you want to make sure all of these bolts are loose so that the bushings aren't getting bound up while you make these right height adjustments. And then once you're done, you'll want to make sure those are tight again before you go driving the car. And uh, once you've set those right height measurements, before you tighten those bushings back, you'll want to roll the car back and forth. Or if you have our Paco hub stands here, you won't need to roll the car back and forth, but you'll still want to jounce the suspension at each corner just to make sure everything's settled uh, before you tighten everything back up. Uh, failing to do this correctly can result in an abnormally tall ride height um, or premature bushing failure. And uh, we receive a lot of questions about that procedure, which is known as indexing the bushings, um, when we talk to customers about um, adjusting their coilover kits. Uh, so make sure you take uh, extra care to uh, get that step right while you're doing your adjustments. Uh, both of these shocks here do have damping adjustments. Uh, not all coilovers will have this, uh, but that's just one more adjustment. On the Foxes, that knob is up here on top. Uh, we'll cover that in a different video. Okay, and now that we've shown you how to do these adjustments on the bench here, uh, let's move to the Miata and we'll show you how to actually do the procedure on the car. Okay, so with these top bolts here on this car, we're going to use a 21 mil uh, wrench. We'll start here, and then just loosen up that big nut like that so the control arm can move freely. And then leave that loose, 
then on these lower bushings here, same thing, we'll be using 17 millimeter wrench. And just make sure the nuts are on both ends there. Oops, sorry, Travis. Are nice and loose, again, so that control arm can move freely while you do your adjustments. And then on the rear, we're doing the same thing here. So these are a bit more hidden. You can see one right up here. And the other one's kind of hidden behind the shock up here. And then for the lower control arm, you have one back here. And then another one right back here. So for these uppers, they're going to be 14 millimeter. So if you want to get in there, make sure that nut is again nice and loose so that these bushings can move freely while you're doing your ride height adjustments. And then same on the bottom. Okay, so now you'll want to adjust the lock rings on here. So again, you can use the teeth up here to grab these little notches in the rings. So you'll need to hold that top ring there. And this can be kind of tricky because they're kind of thin and the teeth will slip out if you're not careful. So make sure those are lined up and simply crack that, that ring, that lock ring loose, just like that. And thread that down and out of the way so that you have some room to perform your adjustment. And so on this car, we'll go ahead and just raise the right head up a little bit. So now that we have that lock ring loose, we can simply turn that perch using this tool, just like that. And then once you've gotten it to a good point there, just spin that lock ring back up to where it meets with that perch. And then cinched up nice and tight like that. Make sure you got it nice and tight. And then we'll move to the back of the car. Okay, so same thing here. This one's a bit more tricky because there's a bit more stuff in the way. There we go. Okay. So once you have this lock ring loose, uh, same thing as the front. Thread it down and out of the way so that we have enough room. To make the adjustment just like that. Now, once you've gotten it to the measurement that you're looking for, again, just spin that lock ring back up until you meet with that perch. Like that. Use that wrench to get nice and snug on that perch as well. All right, now we'll go ahead and lower back down to the ground. All right, and since we're on the Paco hub stands here, we don't need to roll the car back and forth. We simply just need to jounce the suspension at each corner that you've adjusted. Essentially like this here. Make sure everything's nice and settled. All right, and then we can grab our measuring tape. Start from that center of the hub there and measure directly to that fender lip above it. So as it sits here, we raised it up about three quarters of an inch from where I had it set before. We're sitting right at about 13 inches in the front. 
And here we're sitting right about 12 and a half inches. We went up about a half inch from where I had it set before. And so here at this point, if you're happy with the right height adjustment that you've set to, this is where you'll want to tighten all of those control arm bushings back up. And you'll want to make sure the control arms are loaded for this. So you want the weight, the full weight of the car on its suspension. And again, this procedure is called indexing the bushings. And we do get a lot of questions about this when we're talking with customers who've purchased our coilover kits. So definitely take care to ensure that you've got this done and that you've got these torqued while the car is sitting with the weight on its suspension. So we've got those top ones tight. That's all the front bushings tightened there. Let's move to the back. These upper ones are a little hard to film because they're really tucked in behind there. This procedure is going to be the same. Just make sure. Get them nice and tight as well. Okay, so if you uh, are performing this adjustment and you're going to get an alignment afterwards, you don't need to mark your alignment cams before doing this procedure. Uh, if you're just doing a small adjustment and you're trying not to go get an alignment afterwards, then you want to make sure you mark the alignment cams with a permanent marker or a paint pen or something like that. That'll make it easy to see so that when you uh, tighten those bushings back up, you can line those alignment cams back up with the marks that you've made and not, and not see too much change in your alignment. Uh, so if you didn't mark those alignment cams when you uh, change those, or when you loosen and tighten those bushings, those alignment cams are going to move around a little bit. Uh, your camber settings will definitely change, uh, and your caster settings might also change. So we do recommend going to get an alignment anytime you do adjustments like this, uh, simply just to be safe and ensure that your alignment is set the way you want it, especially if you're going to do any autocrossing or track use. Um, that'll help prevent any premature tire wear um, or any other uh, odd steering feel issues um, like that. Uh, next, you'll just want to go ahead and mount those wheels back on there and test drive the car. And See if your ride height's uh, right where you want it. Make sure you're not scraping on anything. Uh, if you lowered it a bunch, or make sure it's not too tall if you went up a little bit to avoid the speed bumps. All right, so let's move on to the questions uh, that we received beforehand uh, here. Uh, we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, once, if you guys have been posting questions during the video here, I'll get to them after I get to the ones that we have uh, set beforehand. Uh, so first question we have looks like, uh, can you show how to set the optimum ride height? Uh, that's gonna vary depending on your setup. Uh, where you're using the car and what you're using it for. So that's going to be a little bit of a, a personal thing, uh, depending on what you're adjusting. Um, but essentially, we've just uh, shown you the procedure on how to set the ride height. Uh, it's going to be a little more up to you to determine exactly where you want that ride height to be. Uh, next question we had is, does it make sense to use full damping uh, at the track? Um, that setting is going to be subject to personal preference and uh, maybe different for each driver or each car on different tracks as well. Uh, so we won't be touching on that in this video. Um, we'll be hopefully touching on that in a future video. 
Uh, next one looks like, uh, would a low ride height make sense for a track car? Is optimum ride height different for track use versus street? Um, lower than flying mat recommended specs. Uh, again, this is another one that's going to vary a little bit depending on the track and the uh, individual driver. Uh, in many cases, you might want a slightly taller ride height for street driving, so you're not scraping on every speed bump or dipping in each little gutter in the road. Um, and on, on track, that's not quite as much of a concern, so you can go a bit lower and uh, maybe not necessarily run into those issues. But you definitely don't want to go too low and run into uh, issues with scrubbing the tires on the fender liners or uh, rubbing your fenders. Next question, looks like, uh, what spring options are available for the VMAX? Uh, so we have the sports, uh, sport package springs, uh, which are included with the classics in the Extreme Sport uh, VMAX packages. And those are 391 pound inch in the front and 258 pound inch in the rear. Uh, with the track, uh, track pack springs, those are 505 inch pounds in the front and 336 pound inches in the rear. All right, next question. Uh, will we do an assembly video for the VMAX suspension? Uh, they are very challenging from what I remember. Uh, so this is on our list of videos to do. Uh, we simply haven't gotten to it quite yet, but we are intending uh, to do a setup video down the line. Uh, so keep your eye out for that. It'll be here on the channel or it'll be on uh, FM Live one of these days. All right, so next question. Uh, does the position of the helper spring change the adjustment process? Uh, where, does where does Fly Miata recommend the helper spring be placed on the top or the bottom? Uh, on the VMAXs, the helper spring is installed below the main spring uh, on the rear uh, of the, uh, the VMAX Classic and sport, Extreme Sport packages, uh, as you see here. I've got the main spring up on top. I got the helper spring down below. And uh, on the track pack springs, there will be helpers at all four corners of the car. And again, the helpers will be on the bottom underneath the main springs on those. Uh, with the Fox coilovers, the helper springs actually go up on top, like we see here. Got the big main spring on the bottom, and then the little, the black helper spring here on top. And you can always check our instructions for any of the kits that we sell. We will go into detail about the, the order of installation for all the parts in the bushings. And we do have um, mentions of where those springs go in relation to that during the assembly process. Next question, uh, when is the suspension too low? At what point do coilovers start losing functionality? Uh, this can vary uh, depending on a lot of factors. Keith has done uh, a number of FM uh, suspension theory videos. Uh, which you can definitely go check out, uh, where he delves a lot more into suspension setup and how these shocks will actually work and how the adjustments will actually affect the handling. So I would recommend you go check out his videos. He's a lot more knowledgeable than me and goes way more in depth uh, than we have time to go well in this particular video. Uh, links will be in the comments below. Next question, why is having additional ride height, um, known as rake, in the rear important? As you probably heard in our recommended settings, uh, some of the rear measurements on the NANBs and NCs are actually a little higher in the rear uh, ride height measurements uh, than in the front. Uh, there's a couple reasons for this. Uh, in, in our opinion, the rake is important mostly for uh, aerodynamics at speed and also for aesthetics. Uh, for most Miatas, especially on streetcars, uh, having a neutral rake to slightly positive, uh, which means nose slightly down compared to the rear of the car, uh, means that less air is going to be hitting the undercarriage of the car to cause lift and therefore instability. Uh, so having neutral or slightly positive uh, rake is better for stability at high speeds, and it simply looks a bit more natural on the car uh, to have it set up that way. Uh, next question, does Fly Miata have recommended alignment settings uh, for our suspension? Uh, so we do have uh, uh, a spot on our website uh, where you can go and actually see our recommended alignment specifications. Uh, let's see here, that's going to be, um, if you go to the tech tab on our web store and hit suspension, and then we have a tab that after that says recommended alignment numbers, and that's where you'll want to go. We have the settings for all four generations of Miatas listed there. Um, if you have any further questions about that, feel free to call into our customer support team, and they'll be happy to help you out um, with further recommendations about those. Uh, next question, at what point do I need adjustable sway bar end links? So adjustable sway bar end links uh, allow you to remove any preload uh, from the sway bar. They're not really required uh, with our sway bars. Uh, but they are the last step in corner weighting your Miata to ensure that it's perfectly neutral uh, handling wise. If you don't need to corner weight your Miata, uh, you can reuse your stock sway bar end links as long as they're in good condition. The adjustable ones are not required. So why do we measure the ride height uh, measuring from the center of the wheel hub here uh, to the fender above instead of using the measurement of the pinch weld, which is underneath the car here, uh, measurement from there to the ground. And that's simply, there's some more variables that get involved uh, that can alter that height of the pinch weld to the ground. Uh, whereas that measurement there from the wheel hub to the fender lip will remain constant and provides a bit more of a, uh, 
a good reference point for us to uh, talk you through the measurements with. Different wheels and tire diameters can also affect that. Uh, if we didn't get to your questions uh, during the video, uh, my apologies, please uh, post them in the comment section below the video here, and we will get to them uh, after the fact. Um, and if you have any further questions, again, feel free to call into our customer support team, and we're happy to help uh, answer any questions you might have. Uh, please remember to like, comment, subscribe on all of our social media accounts, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, my name is Nick, and thanks for joining us here at FM Live. Thank <laughs> you.